talk to you this afternoon. Are we done? Is yes. To uh, impress upon you the foundational importance of early years education and how at Indus we are preparing your child for a post corona world. It is foundational because at this age, up to the age of five, children have got distinct advantages over adults. And I'm going to talk about it a little later. But these advantages are they're more creative than adults. Yeah, we can't hear you. Adults. You can't hear me? Uh, now, now we can hear you, General. Can you hear me now? Yes, General, we can hear you. Children till the age of five have got distinct advantages over adults. They're more creative, they're more empathetic, they're more altruistic, they're more ethical, they're more moral. They think in a non-linear manner, which helps them in exponential thinking. And this is the most critical phase of brain development in a human being. It is also, it is also foundational because in the light of the big threat, which has already arrived, the threat of climate change, is it prepares our child to develop what is called biophilia. Biophilia is a child and a human being's natural genetic attraction for nature. And in this urbanized world that we live, in this plasma world that we live, this biophilia has gone for a six. And because of this new threat, which is already at our door over here, to deal with the post corona world, our children will have to deal with climate change. And unless children are biophilic, they will find it extremely difficult to cope with this change. Now, I'll begin by saying that it is for the first time that online education of children between two and five is happening in the world. And from our experience, I will share with you three major insights online learning. Rightly so, I think you'll all agree with me that online learning is not a substitute for learning. It is an alternative method of learning. I say that again. It's an alternative method of learning. In many ways, it is more effective than face-to-face -face learning. And as my presentation progresses, this will become very clear. Now, Rightly so, there is genuine concern amongst parents about screen time because it affects the well-being of a child. Now, the only guidelines we have in the world today are from the World Health Organization, the American Academy of Pediatricians. But their guidelines are meant for a normal condition, normal world. They have not issued any guidelines for difficult times, temporary times that we are going through now. Now, our insight into screen time has been that it's not the time that matters, but the quality of what they are watching on, on the screen. So 30 minutes of cartoon time cannot be compared with 30 minutes of educational content. So it is the quality of content that makes the difference and not the quality of time. And is that watching alone, vis-a-vis -vis interacting with a friend or with a teacher, or someone whom you know could be your parent, could be your grandparent over there, is a different kettle of fish. And I would say that on balance, if 50% of the present screen time is used for activities, that's screen time only, but activities driven by screen time, and I would say that two hours of online teaching, that is one hour of screen time and one hour of activities, would be considered adequate as far as early years from two to five are concerned. However, I think once the WHO and uh, the AAP guidelines come, we will definitely have to review this. The third insight, gentlemen, is that unlike adults, children think non-linear. Adults are linear thinkers. We go from zero to one, two, three, four, five, six. Exponential thinkers go from one to 10, 10 to 100, 1,000, one lakh, one million. So children are exponential thinkers because they have a moral imagination. Adults think in a sequential manner. When you see a child who reads a book, an adult, adult will go to chapter one, chapter two, and will carry on. And when he finds it difficult, she will give it up. 
children will start reading from chapter 5 go back to chapter 2 go back to chapter 7 depending on what she likes so this is what i called non linear thinking and online learning ladies and gentlemen is the only medium is the only medium that is suited for non linear thinking in the classroom it is theoretically possible to do it but there are only exceptional teachers who can teach non linear manner in a classroom therefore the final insight that we got from our online learning experience with early years is that one hour of online learning is more productive than two hours of face to face learning so this is something which i would like you to understand because these are not available on the internet this is based on our experience i mentioned to you earlier that till the age of 5 children have distinct advantages over adults so let me start with creativity because if we are not innovative today if our child is not innovative today she has no future at all she has no future in a post corona world she will not be able to reinvent herself to reskill herself and therefore this is a great advantage that they have and i also like to underscore at this point that innovation is the only vaccine against covid-19 and the pandemic that will come after that it is therefore the oxygen of our child survival and i can't emphasize this more than that 1968 nasa commission dr george land who is a famous psychologist to measure the creative potential of nasa scientists and engineers he gave the same tests to children starting from age 2 right up to adulthood he tracked these children from age 2 right up to adulthood and his conclusions were startling 98% of children till age of 5 are creative geniuses when they become adults because of the uh, the uh, nurturing effect of the environment they live in the society they live in it drops to 2% now you see the irony of this your child is going through life having a 98% capability but with a 2% output let me give an example of the israeli junkyard we were there in israel at the beginning of this year our leadership team and uh, as opposed to these fancy uh, celluloid and uh, uh, these uh, uh, play schools or play gyms what we call them they have over here the israeli junkyard is an intrinsic part of outdoor play for israeli children and that age starts at 18 months in day all day care centers in all kindergartens and in all preschools across israel the israeli junkyard is a uh, is a must in these locations for our children it is a part of outdoor play it is for the creativity for collaboration and developing independent thinking the second big advantage which children have is moral imagination they are more ethical than us they have a sense of what is right and what is wrong and they are very imaginative they are very ethical as i said to you earlier over there and therefore in this new world of ours driven by machine learning artificial intelligence bioengineering and all the new and uh, technology that are going to come over there uh, ethical dimensions are going to increase the more and more human beings come in conflict with each other the ethical dimensions are going to increase this is an advantage god given advantage they have i spoke to you about altruism to be altruistic is to give up something which you think is desirable for you which you like the most even at the cost to oneself for example sharing food children do that a lot scientifically it is now very well proven that babies babies above the age of 2 are more altruistic than adults and it is this altruism that is there which is foundational in an earlier child which makes them human which makes them empathetic as they grow into adulthood and the fourth very very important aspect i would say is brain development now please listen very carefully to what i say 
hundred percent brain development is over by the age of twenty-five. But ninety percent of brain development is over by age five. The brain that is not fully developed till age five. Well, it is not going to fully develop by age of twenty-five or eighty-five or ninety. It's as simple as that. And the delay that happens is the is the rational part of our human brain, the left brain, the prefrontal cortex. Apart from that, everything happens till the age of five. And why it is important is because it helps in what later on comes is called brain neuroplasticity. The brain is very plastic. That means that the brain, with the new and with new learning, with new environment, with new conditioning. the synaptic connections in the brain they increase they connect very strongly with each other over there and the brain can go on learning till the age of 80 85 90 or under as opposed to earlier thinking that the brain stops learning after about 25 or 35 so this is going to be affected and the second is what is called epigenesis that is this famous nature versus nurture debate that goes on over there so nature and nurture ladies and gentlemen are two opposites that influence the development of the child's brain one is the genetic code that has been given to it and one is the environmental code that is the nurturing that happens in early years in our early learning centers there and that is where the child's genetic predisposition is affected it is made either negative or it is made positive therefore brain development is absolutely critical for a child and lastly of course which we seldom discuss is that children think in a non linear manner children are natural non linear thinkers in other words they are exponential thinkers we think sequentially in a serial manner we want 10% improvement those children who want 100% improvement they not only want 100% improvement they want x improvement that means they want to improve not by doing what they are doing but doing something different 10 times more so this early years education that we impart to our children in this early learning center aims at developing that exponential mind how to think big to think exponential it may interest you to know that exponential thinking is such an important aspect that in gersney island in the british channels is about a population of 65000 there's an experiment going on there to make all 65000 people over there exponential thinkers is one of the great psychological experiments that are happening in the world today now having said this ladies and gentlemen our focus in indus early learning centers in a post corona world is going to be in three areas and i'd like to you to listen very carefully in the post corona world leadership is redefined it is redefined because all entrepreneurs are leaders but most leaders are not entrepreneurs the post corona world requires entrepreneurs and not leaders entrepreneurs are innovators on innovators who are there to make change who are there to make a difference in society who are there to make the world a better place and therefore going by this new redefinition of leadership in practical terms the purpose of education at indus is that when you graduate from the portals at grade 12 you should be startup ready you should be ready to start your startup that is the capability that your child must have doing it after college is too late that is a peace time model that's an old model pre corona model that's your padmini model ambassador car model it is not a ferrari or a lamborghini and therefore you must start as early as possible from prep 1 and prep 2 that is age 4 and age 5 to make your children social entrepreneurs in our way of thinking it could be the tikunolam the purpose could be converted into a social model in fact tikunolam is social action environment is social action 
protecting endangered species is social action. Any aspect of climate change you want to address is social action. So this social action becomes entrepreneurial. So your child has got a vision. The child will set challenging goals for social action. She will have plans. She'll form teams. She'll work as a team and not as an individual. So this is going to be a great focus in all Indus early learning centers. Second is junkyard play. I spoke to you about that. Uh, these junkyards consist of you know broken uh, electronic goods. Could be beds, cupboards, pipes. What you consider as discarded stuff. And um, while the Israelis have no adult supervision, but we will definitely have adult supervision because we do understand that uh, uh, parents would be concerned about children over there. But it's a fairly sanitized yard. It is going to be there. And in this yard, they will be able to work imaginatively, creatively, independently to be more and more creative. And the third special feature in our early learning centers will be to reconnect your child with nature. A child has to be integrated with nature. And this is what I call is uh, biophilia. That is love for earth, love for nature. We are genetically orientated towards nature. We are born in nature. Man is evolved from nature. So with climate change, which is going to be times 100 or times 1,000, Climate change has already arrived. We must prepare our children to respect Mother Nature. Mother Nature is chemistry, physics, and biology. She does not understand these kuchi kuchi arguments. You can't fool her. So, in an urbanized world, in a plasma world, in a distracted world, we as adults are disconnected with nature. And therefore, it is only natural that our children also are disconnected with nature. Therefore, this reconnection and integration has to be done by nature play. We talk of outdoor play. Outdoor play is nature play. It is outdoor exploration, which will lead to reduction in stress, better concentration, rise in empathy and self-esteem, creativity, and humility. You know, when I took over the command of 14 Corps, soon after the Kargil War, when I first landed at, at Lay Airport, Airfield. And I looked around, there were mountains. They were intimidating. And the only thought which came to my mind is how insignificant I am. How insignificant I am. They were so dominating, and you felt extremely humble. At least I felt so when I saw those huge mountains all around me, going up to 21,000 feet, 24,000 feet, 23,000 feet over there. And this, I thought, was a great humbling experience. Therefore, it's important for us at Indus to reinforce the foundational importance of early years. We consider early years is more important than elementary years, secondary years, and tertiary years. It is the foundation. If this foundation is not done properly, we're putting our children to risk. Therefore, any talk of saying that, you know, uh, let's put off this education or this education is not important, I would say, I will go to the extent of saying that what money which you pay in, in tertiary education is the money you should pay in early years education. And what money you pay in early years education, you should pay in tertiary education. It is so critical and vital. We have to get it right. And this is the only place where parents and teachers actually combine and work as partners. That partnership gets diluted as we go advance in age, we pass out from school and we go to college and university. So ladies and gentlemen, I would like all of you, I know you're all having a tough time with the kids at home and you also in a lockdown situation out here, but we should look at the positive aspects of COVID. Let us look at the positive aspects. COVID. It is a crucible experience. It is a life altering experience. It is an experience which is a steroid for our innovation. All these years we have never been innovative. 
because of our hierarchical nature of our society, our education system of road memorization and all that stuff which you're all very familiar with over there, we have not been very creative. In fact, our, in the last 70, 73 years after independence, we have not produced one life-altering innovation in the world. At best, we have been good in Jugaad, nothing more than that. It's only when we have gone, we have been transported to the Western Hemisphere that we start becoming CEOs of trillion dollar companies. One of the most imaginative and creative companies of the world. It doesn't happen in India. And therefore, I feel that this is a, a reminder, a great reminder, a disruptor. It's forcing us to sit up and take note of the fact that if we are not innovative, we will perish. We will have no political value, no economic value. And our children, as they grow up, will be millstones around everybody. So innovation, innovation, innovation. These are the only three things which really matter in this new world of ours. It is a great time that we are reconnecting with ourselves, the spiritual aspect of it. We've had no, we have had no time for ourselves. We don't think we are important. Everybody else is important. We know so much about chemistry, physics, astronomy, politics, healthcare, whatever it is. We know nothing about ourselves. We know nothing about ourselves. Who am I? Why am I here? Where am I going? These are not existential questions. This is the difference between me and a dog, me and a cat, me and a cockroach. This is why from a water molecule, I evolved to where I am today. Therefore, in this post-corona world, the spiritual aspect is more important. This is why there's a shift in education, from education of the head to education of the heart and the mind. The mind is about a philosophical mind. And children are described today by psychologists as philosophical babies. They are more philosophical than adults. Read all the literature on this. They are scientists in the crib. They are more scientifically tempered than us. This is what we have got to nurture. And I would like to also show you that Corona will pass. There will be other issues there. We are not going to be living in a in a VUCA world where the uncertainty comes and it goes. In the VUCA plus world that we are already moved into now, that uncertainty and ambiguity will last for a long time, it may last for months, for years. That is why we have to immunize ourselves psychologically. We have to immunize ourselves cognitively withstand this and this is all going to make us better human beings um, we have a, a very fine presentation for you on the back to school plan we have no idea when the schools are going to reopen these are all guesses future decisions are not going to be pushed by economics or by hope future decisions will be based on data Governments and leaders will decide on data when schools should reopen. But when schools reopen, we have to be ready to receive your child. And that's a very, very special operation. So we have entered into a collaboration with Apollo Hospitals, They're among the best in the country. And we have jointly worked out protocols, which we shall share with you in writing. And the, these protocols concern the safety of your child while coming to school, while in school, while in the campus, while eating, while studying. It will take into all the other protocols for, uh, for how learning is going to happen in the classroom. It will be protocols about uh, for liabilities, maybe legal protocols. And all these protocols, particularly the COVID-19 type protocols will be supervised by Apollo. Their doctors and nurses will be there 
see that these protocols are being followed. We want to assure you, ladies and gentlemen, that when your child returns to school, she will be safer than your money in the Reserve Bank of India. <laughs> or your gold in Fort Knox. You can't take a chance with your child. So these protocols have been worked out. And uh, share it. John, our director of administration over here, he has made a small, I think, a video clip to show what it's going to look like. We've got a presentation. Yes. Uh, I think the presentation is better, General. So, so video we clip, we can to, always And this it. will be refined further. And I think uh, in the next eight or ten days, uh, once we have a final meeting with Apollo, we will share this document with you. We'll send the protocol to all parents. So thank you very, very much. I would like